Jody says this time with the balance board. This is the trick board. There's lots of brands out there. Uh, there'll be some links down below, none of which are affiliated in any way. I bought this with my hard earned cash and we're just going to have a look at it and what's it about and is it useful for sup and surf? Goes to turn the music off. Here we go, Dreddy saves, this time with balance boards. What are they? Are they any use for your sup and your surf? Does it work on any muscles? Is it flat out dangerous? And is it easy to do? All right guys, let's check it. So this is the trick board. Nothing too fancy about these. They all retail around hundred pounds, but you will pick up a second hand bargain if people don't get on with it like I did. And basically what we're looking at here is a normal skate deck, slightly longer than a skate deck. Obviously this one's wider and it's got two stoppers at each end to assist you with not coming off too horrendously. There's the stoppers there, there's the deck. This looks like about nine ply, which is pretty thick, might be more. And the roller. So a hundred quid for a skate, skate deck and a, and a bit of a roller. Yeah, they're expensive, but are they any good? So this is my sort of outdoor setup. Just got the roller on a little bit of wood, so I'm not damaging the roller on the stones and on the concrete. However, I do advise you try this first, either on some nicely cut grass, because it won't roll hardly at all. So all you're doing is working on your balance. You're not working on the roller moving or on your carpet. Now the best I can do for you is use this little bit of underlay. Make sure we're on a flat level surface. The last one I filmed for this was in my garden and it was sloping and literally I was doing nose manuals the whole time. So when you start off carpet, try not to do it on a hardwood floor like I did. I got away with it, but only just the smoother the surface, the harder it is. So straightforward, start with the board, one foot on the back. Now, if you are one foot dominant, especially with surfing or skateboarding, I find it's usually best to start with your dominant foot. I'm a regular skater, so I start with the right foot and then bring your left foot on. So all my weight is now on my right foot. The board is going nowhere. And then all we're gonna do when we start is just try and pick that board up. Now, yes, I made that look very easy. Uh, I have been doing this for a, a number of weeks now and it's even easier on this underlay. Now, if you are a little unsure on starting, we'll get to stopping in a second, grab a chair uh, and use the chair to basically get your balance. Now, I don't have a chair, so let's try something else. It's got a chair on it, it's got a seat. Okay, we're gonna be using this camera now. And as we can see from this camera, hopefully not straight up my bottom, I'm just using the chair just to get my balance. I let go with one hand, how do I feel? And up I get. So there is that approach as well. Okay, let's just quickly go over that again. All your weight on your dominant foot now, if you're not sure which foot is your dominant foot, stand square, have someone behind you and have them gently push you. What you will find 99% of the time, your dominant foot will go forwards. It's easy to check this in the water because you tell someone what's that over there, get behind them, push them in the water uh, and their strong foot will always go in front of them. So it's one way of doing it. Don't advise pushing people in the water, little disclaimer. So, Weight on the dominant foot, all the weight here, and then weight on the left, under weight, and up we get. Now, when you're starting off, there'll be lots of this, and I'll try and emulate it, your legs will be shaking because you're all tense. Just wanna relax, relax that core, 
relax the legs, lie nice uh, loose knees, and it's almost like um, paddleboarding in uh, chop. And I found it very good for training for sort of chop, uh, sort of dealing with it in the water. And all I'm doing is I'm not throwing my arms around because when you do look, it all starts to go wrong. Nice, steady arms and just try and balance. So this is the sort of paddle boarding um, exercise because it's good for the core and it's good for your legs and your hips. I dare say it works your, uh, your bottom muscles as well. I'm not very good at muscle names. You can have your arms out if you like. It can help a little bit. But all I'm doing, although it doesn't look like I'm doing much, actually a little out of breath. I'm actually working on those muscles that help me when I'm paddle boarding. Right, dismount. So it may have already tried to dismount you so you lose your balance. Usually it will just land. But a proper dismount would be all the way, right foot, stomp it down. Don't throw your body, just stomp one of your feet down. Same with the left. Starting to lose it slightly, stomp it down, foot off with the weight still on this foot. So that's the basics, really. It's, it's very straightforward and it is practice. You might not get this straight away. I don't advise doing it indoors, especially on a hardwood floor. Because the roller will be a lot more active shall we say. So what I'm going to do now is just show you two or three sort of intermediate sort of exercises. I don't like to call them tricks because it's not <laughs> very much a trick but see already I was used to the carpet and that's trying to roll away. So the first one you want to do is try and get all the weight on your back foot. Hold it there and then bring it back into neutral. And then do it on your weaker side as well. And I'm just underweight in the back, or the front, or the left and the right. Maybe a little grab, watch your fingers. And that's pretty much my go-to. It's good for skateboard manual practice as well. See if you can just hold it there. And then generally, uh, general, uh, gently roll it back to neutral. Now one that is a little bit more difficult, I'll get my carpet out so I don't need to do a hundred takes, is the, the sort of surf training, a method. Get my balance. Okay, and then what I'm gonna try and do is get right down get the weight over the back or you get right down and that is if you're shooting you're trying to keep the weight on your back foot you're trying to dig that fin in that is a really good exercise uh, another one thanks puppy is to try and get your right knee down now I'm not very good at this. <laughs> and see if you can hold that. That's a fun little uh, exercise with it. Oh, it's such a lovely day, isn't it? I'm actually sweating a little bit, do apologize. So that's pretty much it for this sort of beginner with sort of a little bit of uh, intermediate uh, stuff thrown in. And that's it. So as I'm improving, as I'm getting better, uh, I am starting to learn sort of mount tricks. Uh, this isn't one of the trick boards. So it's not like I could do ollies or, or shubits or anything. Um, also, I wouldn't advise that without shoes on. I don't know if I mentioned it before. I don't wear shoes. I like to keep it as natural as when I'm surfing or supping. But you can wear shoes if you like. Just trying to keep things as similar 
on the water as they are on land. You know, muscle memory gets to feel how your ankles move and you can feel the board much better, obviously without shoes on. All right, guys, that's it for me, for both of me. I'll catch you for the next one.